what we call marine snow. And marine snow is not marine snow like in like snow, but it's um, more like the dust mice in the in the in the house. It's all the gunk and little pieces are in the ocean which stick together and form these clumps. And when you're diving or when you're in the water, it looks like a snowstorm of things falling. So that's why we call it marine snow. So all the little particles in the ocean are not heavy enough to sink down to depths. So they'll stay in the surface and be degraded, be used up um, before they go to depths. But marine snow is big enough to sink very fast. It sinks 100 meters per day or more. And so this is the only way how material from the surface ocean can be brought to depths where animals need it for food and um, bacteria need it to settle on. So it's the only way how material which, gets, which grows in the surface where there's light goes to depths. We didn't even know that oil and marine snow had anything to do with each other. And one day I get this email from a colleague of mine with photos and he said, look at this marine snow I'm seeing in the Gulf of Mexico. And he was out there after the spill. And these huge mucus flocks, normally marine snow is, you know, maybe a tenth of an inch or so big. And here were these big marine snow, maybe half an inch big, which is huge for us. Some even an inch large. These huge marine snow particles. And, um, I was taking a look at the picture and said, wow, what's happening here? It must be the oil. And so that's what we are researching. What does the oil have to do with it? And how does marine snow transport oil to the deep sea, to the ocean floor, to the sea floor, where it covers corals or sea urchins or worms and things like that? We are beginning to realize how complex the, the different parts of oil is when oil is getting older it changes its chemical composition. It actually acts and behaves very differently when the oil has been at the surface for a while or has been exposed to sunlight. And so we are beginning to learn that we have to be very careful about what kind of oil we investigate and the response on it. I've been working with marine snow for a very long time, but I've never worked in a situation with oil. And as far as we knew till, till the oil spill, that oil had nothing to do with marine snow per se. And so this really got me into the research on how oil gets transported in the ocean and how it gets distributed. And at first, before EcoGig, it was on what we call a rapid response cruise. We went out here right away to investigate. And then EcoGig kind of, we came together, formed from that first group of people who were responding and built a plan to try to understand what role marine snow plays for transporting oil in the water to different places. Because oil alone floats, and so the marine snow can sink it down and it can be eaten by bigger, by fish, for example. And so a fish eating marine snow might also inadvertently, not knowing, eat some oil with it. And so this big project tries to cover all these different bases. I look at the marine snow and sinking, but other people look at the impact it has on corals and at the impact this material has on bacteria and how they react to it, and I collaborate with these different people. The marine system is very complex, like most biological systems, and so one researcher can never understand everything that's happening. So I need to collaborate with people who look at the role of bacteria for marine snow formation. And I collaborate with people who look at grazing by marine snow. And I work together with people who look at what marine snow does when it covers the corals and how it affects them. So we do need to work together in these groups, looking at the whole system from different sides and different aspects. And only then can we understand how it all functions. Otherwise, it's like seeing only you know a tiny part of something very big like in the story of the 13 wise men and the elephant and each one only saw a tiny fraction of it so it's like that if we want to see the whole elephant we need to have different people looking at different parts of the picture